Now we're going to move into the second section of the evening, and that's where the debaters can talk directly to one another. You'll be involved as audience members. I want to remind all of you that the, the tone of this, of this part of the debate can be quite informal. You don't need me to be a traffic cop. I will only get involved and pull you back if there's a terrible pile on and everyone talking at once, but feel free to interrupt each other, uh, to support each other. It's your debate this part of the part of the evening. But I want to start it off by asking Michael Hugh Williams, who heard the other side essentially argue that art is not like other stuff that can be regulated. It's closer to love, and you can't regulate love or romance. If, if you take the basic rule, buyer beware, whatever happened to that rule, and why does that simply not apply? Why doesn't that take care of all problems? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure I know the answer to that. So I'm going to say something completely different. I'm going to say. <laughs> you could be in politics with that. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to answer the question at all. I'm going to say that actually I wanted, I wanted to agree with Jerry. And I wanted to say that. He's absolutely right that we're all in this for the same reason. But actually tonight, we're here to debate a very specific motion, which has nothing to do with the fact with the fact that, that we are all involved with art because we love it and because it's our lives and because we are not able to do anything else, speaking from my own point of view. I had to invent a job for myself because nobody else would have me. But. Uh, but actually, we're here because we love art, because it drives us, because it thrills us, and because the exciting thing about the art world and the people that make it is that it is a, I always think of it as a running race where the great artists pass the baton from one to the other, and the really great artists get to carry it forward. And uh, for me, seeing those artists and um, That's very true trying to help fire. them, I'd like try, to <laughs> try, trying, trying to help them go forward, um, is, is, a, is, a, is a byproduct of what we do. And as a gallery, yes, we, um, we sell the work, but also we sometimes have to help them create the work. And but, by the way, Jerry, in case you didn't realize, I look after Vito Acconci. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a, a wonderful answer. artist. I just like he's to doing say, wonderful things. Michael, you sort of made a case in favor of regulation being something that you know, normatively affects, you know, that in, inspires ethical behavior. I mean, I would like to know, I, I do not think regulation ensures ethical behavior at all. Certainly we've seen in the stock market that lots of regulation certainly doesn't ensure ethical behavior. We can, the violations are tremendous. In fact, this idea of you know, the pressure of a common pool or the idea that everybody who's part of the art world, even part of the art market, signs up for the full ethos here that you love, covet, and take care of the art. And in fact, if people in the art, you know, even the most highly compensated people in the art world could make more if they chose a different profession. We all know that. So the reward system is, is obviously other, as we've well established here. I think there's here. two really important points. First of all, we're not actually talking about money here. We're talking about ethics. And we're talking about whether a market is ethical, not about whether people make lots of money or don't make lots of money. We're just talking about ethics. But whether one market or another market is ethical. Behavior. And the other thing I think is really important to understand is that I'm not asking for regulation in the market. I know that that won't happen. And I, yes, okay, mea culpa, I am a cannibal. I'm eating my own, as it were. I'm Jonathan Swift's uh, modest proposal. I'm suggesting that we eat our own children through the market. But actually, uh, I am a great devotee of the market. I think that its uh, inconsistencies, like Adam, uh, are one of the great attractions of the market. And the fact that nothing, uh, nothing is ever the same yesterday as it will be tomorrow is one of the extraordinary things about the art world. But Very to salt. say that the art market is inconsistent, I think every, that's built into it. But inconsistent doesn't ipso facto mean it's unethical from here down to there. Of course, there are going to be instances of people trying to manipulate any market to try to make money. You're saying that it's it is an unethical thing. That no, is your not, argument. Not, Jerry, sorry. What we're saying here is that, and if you look at the debate motion again, we are saying that it is more unethical than the stock market. That's what we're debating. And it's done more damage, is what you're saying, than I, the stock I'm market. I'm not debating whether it's done damage or not. I am simply debating the point that... But then why be in it? Because, because... Richard Feigen. <laughs> Richard why Feigen. In, in all deference to Jerry, the subject here is not the art world. 
which I happen not to particularly like because people make a why why, why not don't you because like people run work? around uh, using it like they use fancy Bentleys and things like that. Well, you know drive that. that, and they don't drive it out there. Look, I'm telling in, you. In all look, we're talking about a market. A market <laughs> is a financial vehicle. In all deference to Chuck, I couldn't agree more. But the subject here is not art. There is yes, no more it is. passion. Yeah, but the art market contains no, no. many extremities. There is more passionate. Many there's, there's no one more passionate about art. Thank you very much than myself. And I'd much rather buy it, it than sell it. <laughs> Prove it, Richard. Oh come on! Listen, so I, everybody knows you're, I'd rather be a collector than a dealer anyway. But the point is that we're not talking. We're talking about the art market. And the market, and I'm saying that art has become a financial market. I don't like it. It makes but my life more difficult. it's been a financial difficult. market since the Renaissance. Let's bring in Chuck Richard. Richard. Chuck Richard, Lewis. yeah, you're a second, primarily a secondary market dealer, which means that you try to buy uh, low and sell high. Or like a real estate agent, you take things on commission and you hope to sell them and collect a commission on that sale. That's really not some, that's to me not a very important relationship to the art world. Um, certainly not to, <laughs> not to artists. Um, you, you might be um, it for dead artists or estates, but um, I'd like to talk about the real, what I think is a real ethical bond between the primary art dealer who represents artists, who believe in that artist, who take a risk on that artist and put that work out there and, and, and make that uh, uh, work available. I was a kid from a uh, 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 mill town in the state of Washington. I couldn't believe when I got to New York and there was this incredible smorgasbord of art for me to look at that was given to me free of charge by galleries. I could go in, I could look at this work. I was never going to buy this stuff. This is a real service that the dealer provides. And they make that artist's work uh, available to... Uh, collectors and there are uh, I, at first I didn't want to meet a collector of mine because what if he or she was a jerk and then I'd say oh my god that jerk owns my work uh, so I tried I tried not to meet them and then I found and, and I uh, and I found out that really truly wonderful people out there buy art and they give it to museums and they make it available to other people if it weren't really philanthropic people uh, who are or who are a real uh, asset to to the to the art world and this commerce that goes back and forth it, uh, there are people who who are um, um, speculators I mean I sold uh, I was a first an advisor to Charles Sanchi when his first buying art I told him which pieces by which artist he ought to buy and he bought one of my pieces I knew right away never to sell another work of art to this guy I knew he was a he, I knew he was a a uh, speculator. He was going to. He liked to make and destroy careers. Uh, and Chuck, are you switching to the other side of the no, argument? I'm, then? No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm talking about. I'm talking about the primary role that a gallery uh, uh, plays in an artist's career, putting that work forward, and and the responsibility. I, I hate to see them slammed. I hate to I hate them talked about as if they were selling. Of uh, hog futures, it's another kind of business, and we, those of us who make art, we appreciate the 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 truly wonderful uh, collectors who are out there. Where would the art, where would museums be without collectors uh, giving their uh, their work to these museums? This is a wonderful part of how the art world works. John, it's you're, not you're just. Let me just pause the debate for a second.